Good morning. Welcome to the AutoCAD LT4 architecture tutorial series. In this series we're using AutoCAD LT for architectural drawing and our aim is to learn to use AutoCAD LT to create architectural documents like floor plans, building elevations, construction details and more. In the starting phase we need to build a small library of architectural items that we can use in our plans. For example, because AutoCAD is a manual CAD drawing software, we have to draw all of the doors, bathroom sinks, toilets, kitchen sinks, beds and other furniture items. We have to draw them manually in AutoCAD. Now what we're doing here is building a library of drawings of all those furniture items. We can save them in a folder and every time we want to draw a plan, we can load them into the project and just insert them into the plan without having to draw them over and over again. All of the furnishing architectural items that we're drawing are specified by using the metric standard sizes. This is so that all of the items stay consistent in proportion with one another. This preparation is necessary for efficiency and this is why I'm doing these furniture drawings now before we start drawing the plans. This library of saved architectural items will serve us forever. So with all that being said, I hope you've prepared for today's video because we are drawing four furniture items and three of them are just rectangles, including a wardrobe and a chest of drawers. So that you don't have to waste your time by watching me draw rectangles and then wait for me to tell you what each rectangle is. Here, I'm showing you what the items are. The first is a bedside table at 450 by 400 millimeters. Remember the measurements here are the metric standard. So it's good to use these in a plan. The second is a chest of drawers at 450 by 700 millimeters. And the third is a wardrobe at 600 by 1200 millimeters. I'm showing them in one file here just for your convenience, but Remember to draw them all in separate files and save them all separately. If you want more information on why you should do that, make sure to watch my last video about beds because it goes into detail in it. But if you want the basic answer, we're saving them as separate files so that when we, whenever we create an architectural plan, we can just insert them into the project. Uh, if I want to insert a wardrobe, I'll look for the wardrobe file, insert it in, and then I don't have to draw a wardrobe. I don't have to draw a bed again and again and again. So I hope you understand that. Now I didn't say anything about this dressing table here because I want to draw the dressing table. Um, in this video I'm going to draw this dressing table and the dressing table is at 450 millimeters by 1100 millimeters. If you don't know what a dressing table is, it's um, it's a table shaped for someone to sit here and stare at themselves in the mirror while doing their makeup. A table for your wife or for your sisters or something. And I'm gonna draw this. Let me delete all of this so we can start from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is draw the limitation box of the dressing table. So the limit is 450 by 1100. And this is the limit which is set by the metric standard, meaning the dressing table has to fit inside this box for it to comply with the metric standard. Uh, I'm going to quickly dimension this. I'm going to set the dimension there because I'm going to need these numbers. I want to divide this rectangle in three sections. I'm going to have one rectangle coming out like this, curving out like this, then curving in, then curving out again. And so to do that I'm going to pull up the calculator here and do a 1100 divided by 3. We're going to call it 367. Okay, so I'm going to use the offset tool and hit enter again. If you want an in-depth explanation of the tools, go back and watch the beds video. Trust me, 
that video is long but I go into detail in explaining the AutoCAD specifics in that video. The videos of me drawing stuff now, I'm just going to try to get through them quickly. So I'm copying this down or offsetting it down by 367. And I'm going to do the same for this side. 367. And now I'm going to do something very important. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. <sighs> okay, now that I've done that, I need to draw a line down somewhere. So I need to pick a point here from where I want the curve to start go around and touch this edge come back down here then it'll go around like this and then we can just mirror this side over to this side to mimic the exact same thing i'm going to draw a line anywhere just as a guideline i think this will be good enough that's random Remember what I said in the last video that the outside dimensions matter. Everything has to fit in these metric dimensions. Anything inside, you can design it however you want. It doesn't matter because this is where your architectural creativity comes in. Okay. Now these middle uh, lines, because they're guidelines for me, I want to change their color. To make them stand out. I'm going to use the arc tool here and the arc tool I'm using is start and angle. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do because I I was playing around with all of these. There's there's too many choices here and not all of them do exactly what you want them to do. So you're going to have to play around and see what works best for you. Now see how this gets tricky. I want a circle on the other side. Oh, look at that. It works like a crank. Look, I want a circle on this side. Can you just can you just do what I want you to do? Look, I don't like you and you don't like me. But can we just get the circle on this side? How, how do I... What if I draw it from the other side? Okay. So if I draw it from here to here... Oh, we got it. Now how do I ensure that this circle is going to touch here exactly? Alright. I can't be sure. But I'm going to set it randomly right now. Like that. And I'll... Uh, sort it out in a minute to get it to sit in the box properly to get this edge to touch this edge okay so let's do that again arc click click and that looks about good and that looks okay so I'll stop it there and I will, let's just zoom in to see how it looks. Hmm, it's a little bit bent, but who cares? It's just a dressing table. Ah, I need a center line here. From here to here. And I'm going to mark that pink too, just to get it to stand out. Okay, that's my center line. And now I can click on this, click mirror, and then just click along the line here to mirror that exactly. And erase source objects? No, I don't want to. And there we go. So, um, I'm going to keep the guidelines in for now, but we can get rid of the outside ones by... You know what, I'm going to keep all the lines for now and just draw the uh, beauty mirror thing that 
people do their makeup in front of here. So I'm drawing a line like this. Simple, very simple. Doesn't have to be complicated. Okay. And I want to move this back a little bit. About there. And then I'm going to mirror both of these lines. Select them first. And mirror them with this center line. Oops. Let me try that again. I hit escape because I'm used to Revit. Okay, we have our beauty mirror. Okay, now we can get rid of things and trim things. So I'll get rid of those and get rid of this. And before I get rid of these, I want I want this edge to touch this so that we can keep the limit of 450 uh, dimensions. It can be less than 450 mil, but I want it to fit in the metric size. So I'm going to zoom in here, and this little node here is telling me that this is the middle of this curve, which is very useful. So I can click and move, find a triangle, and just get it to touch there. And now we have our beautiful table of beauty. So we can trim away the extra bits. Trim, trim, and trim. And there you go. One dressing table drawn, ready for service. Now remember, I deleted everything here. It's because I want to save this as a DWG. And then I, whenever I need a dressing table in a plan in the future, at any time, ever, I can call upon the power of this dressing table. I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, there's our dressing table at metric size, and I'm going to save this as a drawing. Okay, and I'm going to create a new folder. Bedroom furniture. You know what? I'm going to get rid of this actually. And I'm going to rename this beds into bedroom. Because if you've noticed, all the furniture we've drawn so far is to do with the bedroom. So we can keep so we can keep them all in one folder. So double click and I'll call it you guessed it. Dressing table. Save. Okay. And that's what you need to do for the other furniture as well. Remember to draw in this template. Either architectural metric or architectural imperial if you're American and you do feet and inches. And remember to go into the model tab here to do this drawing. Otherwise, this will pop up and you'll wonder, wait, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Okay. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. Our mission is to master this software for the use of architecture. Thank you very much.